The sponge life is a simple one. With nowhere to go and no way to get there, a sponge needs to make the most of its surroundings. To protect against the current, sponges form skeletons out of whatever's around them. For instance, if you are surrounded by calcium, you may make a chalk skeleton. But what if all you have around you is sand? Venus's flower basket finds itself in such a predicament. But making a strong skeleton out of a delicate substance is just its lot in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more, more of Cassie's music, search Cassie Michelle on YouTube. And today we're talking about a coveted Animal Crossing catch. But not much more on that later. Um, depending on what cryptic thing you were referencing, I may have more on that. Who knows? Animal Crossing? I don't know I'm very much about Animal Crossing, so I don't know if it's <laughs> if this is if what I'm my one of my fast facts is relevant to that. Johanna is playing Animal Crossing and I put this on the list because she said, Is a Venus flower basket a real animal? And I looked at it and it looked like a a cylinder and I'm like, I don't know, let me look it up. Oh, oh you're actually talking about Animal Crossing. I thought Yeah. It's something oh. you can catch while fishing. No, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> for for several reasons, it doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, I never understand. I, I still don't understand the appeal of Animal Crossing. I mean, I'm one of those people that don't understand the appeal of like The Sims and stuff like that. Yeah. So maybe you need to be the kind of person that enjoys that kind of game to enjoy Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is very relaxing. It's got kind of like a nice little ambient soundtrack and everything is very pleasant except for there's way too much talking and dialogue that prevents me from like crafting which I, which is what I'm trying to do but what do you what are you trying to do build what's but it's as, the same thing as an RPG without fighting just advancing but in an RPG like you're going somewhere you are defeating something you're bringing something somewhere you're you you have like a you have a, a goal and that goal will eventually be over well, well in this one your goal well for is to advance to the next more like the next sized house it's like the american dream it's just constant progression it's rat race except for instead of like working you're farming which is work it, instead of way, working in an way office way less significantly less Rowan Atkinson in this rat race. Yeah. In more animals. Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. Oh. But <laughs> it, it's definitely something that like only interests me for like an hour and then it's that's like, it. It's like the the goat game that interests me for about an hour. Yeah. And I was like, goat well, what, what do I do <laughs> outside of just flop around? I need a, I need a goal, a task that has a definite end and I will know when I've succeeded and then I can put down the game. Like that's, that's my kind of game. That's why I like RPGs, but not MMO RPGs. Cause there's just, I guess you get to level a hundred. That's the point. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's also stories usually. Yeah. I, I'll just, I'll stick with my dark souls anyway. <laughs> I don't know how much of that is going to make it in, but I mean, we <laughs> do talk about animals and it is animal crossing. So, make of that what you will. But we are talking about the Venus's flower basket, which apparently is something you can give someone or find yeah. and give someone in a popular uh, Nintendo game. You can find it probably like in a shell shop. It's probably very hard and expensive to buy. Well, they are given as gifts, and I will get to that when we get to the fast facts. But we're going to call it here because Venus's flower basket is quite a mouthful. Uh, we're going to call it here the basket case. Nice. Because I have the time. I'm not going to sing any more of that song. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm gonna, we're also going to call it the uh, deep sea doily. Nice. And the VFB dynamite. <laughs> 
<laughs> the VFB, the very friendly. Bastards. Yeah, I was. I was also the <laughs> VFB. I saw the movie once. The BFG. It was I, incredibly underwhelming. I did not really like it. I mean, it 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 had like all of the heartwarming Spielberg elements to it, but it and had then, and then a, a meeting with the Queen that involved a lot of farts, and it really lost me when it turned into sh- Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, it had a lot of the magic that Spielberg has so this good anyways let's say let's taxonomize this flower basket because nobody really even knows what we're talking about it's like flower basket that's not an animal you said you do animals you lied to us <laughs> trust trust me you, we didn't lie to you we're and not I'll taxonomizing prove it. A, like a wicker basket <laughs> <laughs> i will prove it to you with taxonomy science so this isn't a kingdom you know love and are in and that kingdom is animalia so there you go it's not it is not a wicker basket Starring Nicolas Cage. Um, Nicholas th- Cage. Wickless. The Wicker Man. <laughs> uh, Wickless Cage. It's just, he's got a candle, but he can't light it because he's wickless. <laughs> um, or he's or he's never seen John Wick, so he's wickless. The uh, phylum is Porifera. So I think this is the first time we've ever been in this phylum and possibly in one of the rare times we go outside of the two phylums we spend all of our time in, which is Chordata and Arthropoda. Actually, no, we go to Mollusca a lot. Yeah. And Nidaria. But no, we're, is the phylum for the Venus flower basket is Porifera and the class is Hexactinellida. 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 Uh, the order is Lysacinosida. Lysacinosida. And the family is. I mean, I really should have practiced these. (laughs) Euplectelidae. Euplectel. Oh, wow. Euplectelidae. And the genus is Euplectella. That's. The Euplect is not. That just doesn't want to. Just doesn't want to form. Uh, the species and the species is Aspergillum. So Euplectella aspergillum. So the yeah, you Euplectella aspergillum is the binomial nomenclature, and that means it's time for my favorite part of the show, critter groups. The part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question, and that question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal, or what is the term of entry, or what is the collective noun? And, oh, I, I should have mentioned, we're talking about sponges. Sea sponges. You probably, I probably obviously guessed that from the nomenclature Euplectella aspergillum. Clearly a sea sponge, but I just thought I'd reiterate that for those of us that um, don't speak whatever gibberish language this is. Um... But yes, it's a sea, it's a sea sponge. So that's that's the animal. So the the problem is is that um, there really isn't an official term of entry of this. So I, I need you to guess the one that I found, the one that I that the only one I found on the internet. Um, so Joe, if you found a group of sea sponges, would that be a a sprout of sponges, b a sleaze of sponges? C, a satchel of sponges, or D, a simmer of sponges. Or E, a pineapple of sponges. There's only one sponge in the pineapple under the sea. Unless his parents visit. That's true. Then there's three sponges. (laughs) None of them are shaped like actual sea sponges. His parents are more more rounded. Uh, Sure, that's like, but that's like a, a sponge you'd wash your car with, one of those round sponges. Hmm... I'm going to go with a satchel of sponges, because that's the only one I can remember. I said sprout, sleaze, satchel, and simmer. But satchels, you are... Sprout makes sense to me, but I'm going to go with a satchel, because who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Because there's no rhyme thank you or reason. For, thank you for validating my favorite part of this show. <laughs> you know because... what? I'm going to go with my gut and go with uh, Satchel, but I'm really feeling to like I need to pivot to Sprout, but Satchel it is. All right, you are incorrect. The answer was Sleaze. Yeah, see, that's, this is why it doesn't matter what I pick. This happens all the time, where I like 
could be this one, it could be that one, and it never's either of those. <laughs> but that's a, that's better. I'd rather that happen than me think it's one, but feel like it's the other, and then it it actually was the other. That's that's more of a heartbreaking loss. At least you were close. At least, yeah, I don't know. That's more it like is... the end of Friday Night Lights when you lose by inches. Sh- sh- sure. Is that a dancing movie? I feel like we've had this exact conversation on the podcast before. That's the John Travolta dancing movie, right? No, that's Saturday Night Fever. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, it's a football movie. Then. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, I do. Sorry. Dancing movies and football movies don't really make it into my repertoire. <laughs> so, Just by hearing the name of that, I'm like, yeah, I've never seen that. <laughs> Friday night is when football, high school football happens. Yeah, that's Usually. something I would know. Actually, that's something I should know because there is a um, a high school with an earshot of my house, and I can hear them, the band playing when they have their games. Anyway, the answer is a sleaze of sponges. However, that was just the one I found on a forum, so it's I don't think it's official. I don't think anyone really cares what the term of entry is for a uh an animal that's basically a plant all right let's talk about what this thing looks like so these things do not look like your typical sea sponges they are totally tubular which is not uncommon among sea sponges uh but they have a unique white lattice structure that makes them look like a fancy doily which is why i called them the deep sea doily um, or like a medieval horn made out of dryer lint. They're kind of like have these stringy things coming off. So it just uh, yeah, it looks it looks like a a, wo- a wool. It's it's got wool in it or something. Um, but it's the medieval horn shape is exactly what you're thinking. Like a it, it has the 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 top of the tube that is not attached to the rock is much bigger, and it. Uh, slopes down into a curve into a, a, the smaller appendage which attaches to the rock. Um, here is how Wikipedia describes the lattice structure. Because <laughs> I saw the sentence and I was like, I'll, I will n- literally never understand this even if I clicked on all the links. So here's what it says. It's a syncoid type of canal system. Oh, yeah. oh, wait, a, a syncoid type of canal system is present where ostia communicate with the incurrent canals, which communicates with uh, radial canals through uh, prosopiles, which in turn open into spongical and outside through the ossicum or uh, osculum. You can always tell when a Wikipedia page is written by a scientist and not a writer. I think you actually added a the. Right? I did. One, it, one it, of the sentences just starts. <laughs> I, yeah, I had to add a couple of things in there because it was... There was a lot of grammatical problems with it. Um, But basically, after reading that, I was like, I couldn't have said it better myself. Nailed it. Um, So I hope hope that breaking it down like that to everybody um, just really uh, made it accessible. And now everyone has a, a brilliant mental picture of exactly what this lattice structure looks like. Well, uh... In the major fact, I'm going to talk about the structure more, and it's it was even it was very difficult to explain very intricate visual elements. Yeah, I figured I wasn't spoiling too much of the major fact by reading the sentence because I don't think anyone can understand it ever, <laughs> <laughs> uh, except the person who wrote it, because it's not it's not only obtuse but it's also incorrect <laughs> grammatically. What do you mean? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's grammatically problematic anyway so it's also bioluminescent and some scientists special speculate that it uses its bio bioluminescence to attract uh plankton to it which is what it eats so it's like a medieval horn is it as big as a medieval horn yes can i can i drink a, a draught of mead from it uh ex- if you ex- like wrapped it in duct tape because it's very porous as yeah. sponges are wont to be uh, but let's let's talk about the size. 
Welcome to the Beloved Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show when we introduce that's introduced by you when you send in audio of yourself saying singing or chittering the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new measure up intro this week. No. Which means we get to hear from an animal and Carl says to guess what it is. Marvelous. So without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Is that A, a bullfrog? Just kidding. <laughs> Is it A, an, a Eurasian wolf? B, a plains wolf? C, an Arabian wolf? Or D, an Arctic wolf? See, do you do this to me because of critter groups? <laughs> like the fact that it, it can be nothing but a shot in the dark unless I'm a, a, a loop. A loopologist, which is, I'm assuming is the term for people that study wolves. This is a little unfair because these are this is a sub these are subspecies. This is all the same species. So I don't think a, a wolfologist could even tell the difference. Uh, at first it's it it's kind of muted, so I it sounds like um my son when he's just making noises but his mouth is closed. And he's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe I didn't play it loud enough. So I just had a, a bit of a flashback to 2.30 in the morning last night. Um, um, <laughs> I'm going to say the third thing you said. I don't even remember what it was, but I have I have no no way of of even narrowing it down. Um, so what was that? Asian? Eurasian wolf. That that thing. Eurasian plains, Arabic or Arabian and Arctic. We'll say okay. Wait, 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 wait. Plains, plains wolf. Final yeah. answer. Yes, that is incorrect. It's an Arctic wolf. Ah, a pure white wolf. So I thought I heard like some bugs or something in the background, and I was like, "There's no way it's an Arctic." It's wolf. not the. It's a white wolf standing, sitting in like the grass. It's green grass. That's unacceptable. It's th- so it's summertime. It, it, it needs to be in the snow. I should have heard nothing but the howling of the wind over the snow. And then I would have known that that was the Arctic wolf. I've been betrayed and bamboozled. Uh, okay, let's talk about basket length. They're 25 centimeters to 10 inches. How many of the Brochesia nana chameleon go into the Venus's flower basket? Here's a hint. What? Uh, how many of a com- this particular kind of chameleon go into the the basket? Not not literally into the basket, but into the length of the basket. All right, so ten inches, and this tiny chameleon. Ten. No, that's too small. Five. Five is my answer. Five chameleons go into this thing. Five. Final answer. Yes. I think it's probably worth noting that it can be a lot. I guess bigger, but I, I when you type in how big. Is it? Yeah, that's what I got. 10 inches. Oh, I typed in the nomenclature and then size. Oh. It's, it says Aspergillum is uh, radially symmetric and of moderate size, ranging from 7.5 centimeters up to 1.3 meters in height, but the majority are between 10 and 30 centimeters. 10 and 30 centimeters? Mm-hmm. According to... Well, 25 you know, centimeters is 10 inches. Yeah, so that's why I was I was like, it, then you're probably just going with the upper end of average. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, you said ten chameleons. No, uh, I said five. Like five chameleons. Let's. Well, he, maybe you need a hint. <laughs> the chameleon Fine. was discovered in Madagascar and was dis- first described in 2021 this year. Ooh. It may be cool. the smallest reptile alive. Oh. Um... That changes things. I'm going to say 10. Changing it to 10. 10 chameleons. Final answer. Yep. It's the correct answer is 18.8 chameleons. Ooh, they're tiny boys. The chameleon is just 
0.5 millimeters. It's like three quarters of an inch. Yeah. That's a wow! I want to see this. What is it called? <laughs> you can see um, Brook Brook Easia, like the brook, like a stream, and then E S I A. I got it. I got it. Oh, oh my goodness! This thing is so cute. It's very small. It is so small. <laughs> oh my Dude, goodness! There's pictures of it on like the tips of people's fingers. Okay, he looks. Okay, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go. <laughs> he looks like what? It looks longer with the tail, though, than maybe three quarters of an inch. Maybe it's just a big finger, <laughs> or a small finger. Small finger, yes. Uh, so let's talk little, fiber. Little let's talk fiber length. The glassy fibers that attach the basket to the sea floor are as thin as a human hair and about eight inches long. So how many of these fibers go into the length of uh, Dimitri Donskoy? Dimitri? TK2208. It's a Russian s- submarine. Definitely Dimitri. It doesn't... S- it's not spelled like you'd think Dimitri would be spelled. D-I-M-I-T-R-I? D- it's D-M-I-T-R-I-Y. Huh. I mean, it's Russian, and a lot of Russians are named Dimitri, so I, I would probably yeah. say that. Uh, so here's a hint. So the sub is a Typhoon-class Russian Navy ship, and it's the largest submarine in the world. Oh. I mean, really, my only reference points are Crimson Dawn and the Hunt for Red October. <laughs> um, I, I've been on in a submarine in Hawaii, in uh, Pearl Harbor. Oh really? Mm-hmm. It's very small inside. Was it like decommissioned, or did you like take a take a little trip? It was decommissioned. Oh, it's on. Actually, I've been in an actual submarine in Hawaii too, like to go see some fish. Really? But that was more like commercial. Not it was bigger and more comfortable on the inside. That sounds so awesome. It I would is love very to fun. do that. Also, it's also equally terrifying because. Yeah, a b- being in a submarine would be, for me, equally we, terrifying. We and probably awesome. didn't get. Wh- when does light start? When does color start to fade? I don't know. After like a, three, 30 feet, I think, or is after it after just thirty? Probably like a hundred feet. Maybe That's my guess. We color was just starting to fade. We were losing specific colors when we were down there. Like in the water or with each, like looking at each other? In the water. Like he would point <laughs> out, the guide would point out a fish and he would tell us, oh, that fish is actually red. But it looks like like a dark brown well, or something. I wonder if you, like if you shined a, like a flashlight on it, it, it would then be red because... Shine a light and let the whole light. world see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. I'm imagining that the world's largest submarine is like, uh, we'll say 300 feet. That doesn't sound like a lot. I mean, it's 30 stories though. It's, yeah, uh, say 300 feet. I'm I'm probably like way too low, but whatever. Um, cause like it's either that or the one from Atlantis. <laughs> 450. I know I'm like way low, but whatever. Let's just let's just get this over with. 450. Fibers? Yes. Final answer? Yeah, I'm probably... It's probably like 4,500. Not quite that much. Uh, the correct answer is 861, almost double. Okay, so it's like a... It's like a... 500 and... It's just shy of like two football fields. Uh, 574 feet or 175 meters. That's a big, big, big boat. It is a stories. big boat. Yeah, that's all I got for made uh, measure up. All right, let's hit let's hit up some fast facts before we get into the major facts. So, like I said, they eat plankton filtered it out of the ocean. Oh, I m- should mention their range. Like trying to figure out where to put this, but they live at the bottom of the ocean near the Philippines in Southeast Asia, up to twenty five hundred meters or eighty two hundred feet. 
below the surface, and that's a, that's over a mile and a half below the surface. Uh, so they live at the bottom of the bottom of the ocean there. Um, which is why, A, they're a sponge, and B, they live at the bottom of the ocean. And that's why I'm incredulous when in Animal Crossing you could just dip your line into the water and catch <laughs> one. <laughs> um, Somebody just threw that in there from a gift shop. What? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody threw one in there and you're just like, oh, look at this dead sea sponge that just was floating around. Either that or your fishing line is uh, t- is like 8,000 feet long and you accidentally hooked a sea sponge and not anything else. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they, like most sea sponges or all sea sponges, they just, uh, they feed on plankton that happens to get trapped in their... Um, in their bodies. Uh, but that's not all that gets trapped in their bodies. So there is a shrimp called the glass sponge shrimp, which spends its entire life inside of the VFB. So what will happen is that a breeding pair will swim into the sponge because it's got this like open lattice structure. Um, and they'll swim in there when they're small and they'll f- they'll live there for a time and feed off of the plankton that like take some of the food from the sponge but eventually they grow too large and then they can't leave the sp- the the sponge so they'll spend they, they'll they have to die in there they live their whole lives in there cuz there's no like oh there's no it's it's not like when i said it was tubular that doesn't mean that there's just this opening in the top it's also closed up there so yeah, they get trapped inside, uh, but they they're a breeding pair, so they'll have offspring inside the sponge, and the offspring can leave because they're small enough, and they'll go out and find a mate, and then find a sponge of their own to live in. Um, so they're kind of like squatters, I guess, um, professional squatters. But it's they, they don't just take they're not just parasites. They don't just take from uh, the food from the. Uh, the sponge they also clean the inside of the sponge um and the sponge provides food and protection so it's a good it's a symbiotic ish relationship (laughs) but because two shrimp go into the the sponge and then live their whole lives trapped there it's like a love story of uh, two trapped lovers kind of thing and it's uh, it's that chris chris pratt movie and uh, jennifer lawrence when they're trapped on a spaceship Oh, uh, Passengers. Yeah. Apparently that it didn't do so well. I'd never really felt like seeing it, but um, even though I like sci-fi a lot. Yeah, so because of this, the I guess, inherent romance in this shrimp story, uh, it's made the Venus's flower basket a symbol of undying love in Japan. Hmm. Now, I could not find for the life of me whether they give actual Venus's flower baskets or they give the version you will see if you type in Venus's flower basket into Google, which I think it's the latter. If you type in Venus's flower basket into Google, um, the first thing you're going to get is... Uh, like Valentine's Day flowers or something like that. Um, like Venus stuff like that. And I imagine that's what's given in Japan as a like a group of flowers that are just reminiscent of it instead of a dried, a dead dried sea, sea sponge. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I couldn't the, find... It's kind of like that one, uh, the, the purple the purple frog that we did not too long ago where we couldn't figure out whether they made pendants that resembled the frog or they actually took the frog's desiccated body and made a pendant out of it. <laughs> All right. I didn't realize this was going to be a themed episode, but it is get your, you have a couple days from when you hear this because Valentine's day is for, for the listener this weekend. Right, yeah. So this will come out on the ninth. So, so get yourself a, a a Venus a sponge, a Venus flower basket sponge. Um, you're gonna have to learn to hold your breath for a really long time, or just go fishing in Animal Crossing. Apparently, you just 
you can just fish one up and give it to your soulmate in Animal Crossing. I'm, I assume that's what you can do. It's basically The Sims, right? How much is a 8 to, to 9 inch Venus's flower basket? No. Oh, 20 bucks. Is it a, a real one? Yeah, it looks like it. Yep, you can buy one. I've heard that they're in like shell shops. So you can. It's made. Well, we'll talk about what it's made of and why it makes sense that it lasts and you can just buy it. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Let's talk about the major fact. There's a lot to talk about. We have no time to do it in, so let's do it quickly. So, the Venus's flower basket is literally made of glass, or more accurately, silica, which is what glass is made of and what sand is made of. Sponges have structural elements called... (laughs) It autocorrected to specials, but it's spicules. Sounds like a bad word, but it isn't. (laughs) Uh, that they're they're building blocks that they build their little skeletons out of. So, okay. these silica spicules form the unique look and shape of the Venus's flower basket. Um, silica spicules is my next D and D character as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, but your nickname is silly, <laughs> halfling bard. A glass tube sounds like it would be extremely delicate but the sponge needs to withstand withstand ocean currents detritus the occasional bump from uh sea life in a raucous shrimp party every once in a while so the structure of the basket (laughs) is said to make it as strong as steel and how is that you might be asking how do we do that so to underhand to understand how researchers have looked very closely at the construction of the tube as a whole and at the spicules themselves, at the most basic level, each glass fiber is actually ma- many layers of glass. So each layer is only micrometers thick. It can be just thicker than the width of a molecule. Oh, wow. So this is something that we can't even reproduce with glass today. I'm surprised uh, we can even see it. Layering th- layers that that I mean, you use a microscope to see it. Um, but but yeah, like uh, layer glass that that small that thin is not something we can recreate. So it, it, layered glass is much stronger and can absorb more force than a single layer of thick glass. That's why hurricane and bulletproof glass and sometimes zoo glass has multiple layers. So the fibers are already extraordinarily intricate and strong just 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 from that. But then looking at the basket, it seems like it it has like a wicker basket pattern, like a like a cross hatching, a a grid system, but it's more like a crisscross a crisscross of layered apertures. So that's another couple of words that makes no sense, but it does. I, know, I understand know. crisscross. It only makes sense if you already know what it looks like. <laughs> uh, so aperture meaning like the, like you know, opening. like a, on a camera, opening on a camera, uh-huh. uh, or the the opening to the door to Cerebro in the X Men movies. Uh, each spicule is a cross is a, is a X. That is slightly skewed, like an out, like an italicized X. So, as if you take your fingers and make like the L seven weenie sign with both, and you point your thumbs down, and then you put your index fingers over each other, that's like a right angle, right? That's a box you've created, not not a half of a box. But then, if you cross your index fingers you can make something more like a a rounded circle. So if you do this many, many times, the crosses end up becoming like a circular opening instead of a box. So circles are structurally more durable than squares. Humans have known that for a while, which is why the portholes on the sides of ships and submarines are round. Circles uh, maintain the integrity of the ship's holes while... Corners and window panes allow stress to concentrate in particular areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, so on top of all this, there are ribs that run perpendicular to the base 
grid. So you've got this tube and then like a like a spiral uh, rib that runs all the way up, uh, which reinforces the overall structure even more. So here's the interesting part. Every other porthole, every other hole in, in this structure has an X that reinforces the opening. So why not every opening? Uh, because of mathematics and engineering and stuff I don't understand, adding more reinforcement on each on each hole wouldn't actually add any structural integrity. So it's it's like reaching a level cap and you can put more points into it, but you're just wasting resources. It's uh it plateaus. It's it's a soft cap. A law of diminishing returns. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the sponge is one of the most primitive animals on earth, but it figured out how to maximize efficiency in creating a structurally sound skeleton. I don't know if figured out is the right word. Uh, it w- was a gift bestowed upon them. Uh, so a guy named Dr. Peter Fratzel, uh, 3d printed plastic cylinders that were inspired by the flowers baskets, the flower baskets design and found that it was extremely efficient and durable. I actually have a cup that kind of looks like this. A what? I have a cup, like a big plastic, uh, like insulated cup. Like a souvenir cup, but it has this like lattice looking structure on it. I wonder Uh, if it's inspired by the VFB. Is it it light, minimal, and strong? I, I would say all three of those things about my cup. Interesting. Well, that's what I would say about the, the Venus's flower basket. The the design may inspire buildings in the future, uh, and I think it maybe already has. I think there's some some building that is very similar to this in structure, um, and it's uh, it just maximizes durability and minimizes waste uh, waste of resources. So that's 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 the future. You're, we're all gonna live in flower baskets in X's. The future is going to be cool. Yeah, I'm typing. We thought it would all be Chrome. SpongeBob said it was all going to be Chrome, but it's not. It's going to be. Don't listen to that Sponge. Listen to this one. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's all I got. I'm looking for the building. Oh yeah, huh? Where is this? I don't know. There is... I don't know. But if you look up Venus's flower basket building, there is a... Like a big torpedo-shaped building with this kind of X pattern on it. The Gherkin. (laughs) I think it's what it's called. In London? Is it London? I don't know. I guess so. Anyway, look it up. It's cool. All right. So that was the Venus's flower basket. The deep sea doily so for you out there in podcastia veg out stay bright and support monogamous shrimp relationships like the venus flower basket here in life death and taxonomy Hey, LDT listeners. Thanks for listening to the end of the episode. For your loyalty, you get a shameless self-promotion from us. If you haven't already, leaving a review on your favorite podcast app can really help us grow. But telling your podcast-loving friends about us is even better. Also, don't forget to send in your measure-up intros and animal suggestions to ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We love hearing from you. As always, thanks most of all for listening. podcast <laughs> this is a story of a shrimp who got married and wasn't a wimp <laughs>